Uh, so today, uh, let me unfreeze this because this is not the right PowerPoint. Uh, we're starting on light as a particle. So yesterday, we talked about light as a wave, how it acts as a wave, how we look at the math um, and describe it as a wave. Uh, today, we're going to talk about it as a single little particle. Um, so the light coming out of this uh, LED setup right here um, has characteristics as a wave, but also it comes out as little individual particles. And it actually took us quite a while um, to figure this out. So um, wave model explains a lot of the behavior of light, but it doesn't explain everything. Particularly, it doesn't explain why particular frequencies of light are absorbed or emitted in certain situations. And their example here is your burners on your stove at home. Um, has anybody ever, like when you're boiling some water or something, you turn your burner on um, and it gets nice and red like this? Um, this is actually like putting off red light. Um, and so they saw this um, probably long before ovens were a thing, um, maybe just like a hot piece of metal in, in a campfire or something. Uh, they saw this and they were like, why? Why does the metal give off this red light? What is happening? How is this light created? Um, where does it come from? And when you talk about light as a wave, that doesn't really satisfy that question. Um, it doesn't answer that question. And so they had to dig deeper. They had to try to figure it out. Um, and the guy who really figured it out is Max Planck, um, or it might be pronounced Planck. Uh, he's German. Um, know that this guy is extremely famous. Um, has anybody heard of Max Planck? For a guy you've never heard of, um, worldwide in the scientific community, he is extremely, extremely famous. He has numbers named after him. Um, he has periods of time named after him. Uh, you'll see in a, in a little bit, there's an equation that he and Einstein worked on together, and his name comes first before Einstein's um, because he actually did more work on it and, and kind of was the one that developed it a little bit better. Um, and so... Uh, you go into Europe or you get into college and, and mention Max Planck. Are you okay over there? Are you having trouble breathing or something? <clears throat> you, I can hear you like huffing and puffing. Yeah, are you all right? Just yeah. making sure. I'm making sure you're not having like a, a, a medical emergency or something. Are you good? Yeah? Yeah, an allergic reaction in your lungs. You good? All right. Uh, so if you go out somewhere, you're um, – you, you should be familiar with Max Planck, especially if you're going to go to college and take a college class. Uh, just remember his name. It's an easy name, like, like Planck, Planck, I guess Planck, maybe. Uh, but in 1900, Max Planck investigated light emitted by heated objects. So just like that, uh, the stovetop burner, um, when it gets hot, it, it starts to emit that red light once it gets to a certain temperature. Um, he theorized that energy is absorbed and released by particles in small discrete amounts, he calls quanta. Um, and if you get into upper level physics, or maybe even he mentions it in the physics class across the hall, um, when we talk about quantum physics, that's what they mean by quantum, is little individual pieces of things, quanta. Um, almost like the word quantity, right? Um, so a certain number, a small discrete amount of energy that can be absorbed or emitted by an atom. That is a quanta. Uh, when we talk about light, Individual quanta are called photons. Um, so Planck derived an equation to relate energy of a quantum to a frequency. Um, so he, he figures out the relationship between that little energy packet and what the frequency is. And we already talked about frequency yesterday. That's the fancy little F over here in this formula. The speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength. Now he's going to introduce um, quantum energy into it. So... Here is Planck's equation. Um, it is energy is equal to Planck's constant. So they literally named the number after him because he was the person that designed it and figured it out. Um, so it's Planck's constant times the frequency. This is pretty easy. And for the most part, you're going to be solving for energy. Maybe sometimes they flip it around and you have to solve for frequency. Um, so you're going to move the Planck's constant underneath the energy, just like we did the other day. If you're multiplying here, and you want to move Planck's constant to the other side, you divide by it on both sides, and that moves it over to the other side. Um, so Planck's constant is represented by the little fancy H. Um, regular H was taken by height, so we got to go to the fancy italicized H. Um, and energy is E. Energy is always just energy. Um, so that's the formula. E equals H times F. Now, uh, what is Planck's constant? If it's a constant, 
it always stays the same. It doesn't ever change. Just like the speed of light is a constant, um, it's always going to be 3.00 uh, times 10 to the eighth power. Planck's constant is always going to be 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Um, that is an extremely small number. Um, so when you're talking about how much energy uh, a little tiny piece of light has, it's going to be just a little bit of energy, very, very small. Um, that being said, you're going to be multiplying and using this number. So you're going to be multiplying it by the frequency and getting your answer out of that. Now, uh, Planck's constant in his, is in units of joule seconds. Um, the joule seconds kind of help you work things out when you get into uh, multiplying it by frequency because joules is energy um, and time seconds, when you get into frequency, it's per seconds. So you're dividing by seconds for frequency. Um, so when you have seconds on top and seconds on bottom, the seconds will cancel out and the only unit you'll have left is joules, which is energy. So this is kind of uh, satisfying all your different units and making sure you get your units correct. Uh, so yeah, energy is in units of joules. Okay, yesterday we talked about frequency and wavelength and how they're inversely proportional. If your frequency goes up, your wavelength goes down and vice versa. If wavelength goes up, frequency goes down. This is going to be directly proportional. So they're going to go up and down together. If your frequency goes up, your energy goes up. If your frequency goes down, your energy goes down. And I hope they show, yes. So remember yesterday I talked about, um, we really only were worried about wavelength and frequency, but I told you about energy yesterday. Um, so like all the stuff to the right is low energy. It's all around us. We use it all the time. We bounce radio waves everywhere. We stand right next to the microwave waiting on our hot pockets. And because it's low energy, we're not too worried about it. But you get to the other side of the visible spectrum and you get to the high energy stuff, ultraviolet light, x-rays, gamma rays, which have enough energy that if we get them too often in our body, they'll start to cause damage to our cells. And eventually they could lead to, um, if you're talking about the, the medium energy stuff, ultraviolet and x-rays, over a certain amount of time, they could lead to enough damage that your cells start to break down and you develop cancer. Um, if you get into gamma rays, those are very high energy um, they will cause cell damage in a short period of time, uh, and your 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 tissue will actually start to degrade. It's not going to be a fun time. Like I said, you're not going to turn into the Hulk. You're going to get sick and die. Um, it's not going to be a good thing. So um, we're really thinking about energy today versus this frequency. And you can see the high energy stuff. You have shorter light wavelength and higher frequency. So the the waves are going to come much faster at you for your high energy stuff than your low energy stuff. Low energy stuff, the waves just kind of come pretty slowly compared to the high energy. Uh, so high frequency radiation carries more energy. Uh, gamma radiation is extremely damaging to your cells and it's also the highest frequency that we have in the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, radio waves are down here towards the end. They're virtually harmless. Um, literally, there's radio waves bouncing around this room right now all over us. Um, and we don't care. It's not going to hurt us even over an entire lifetime of radio waves being everywhere. It's not a big deal. Uh, very low energy. Probably don't even penetrate your skin. Uh, where gamma rays would like go through the wall into the next room and like penetrate into your organs. Um, gamma rays are pretty bad. And we'll talk a little bit about gamma rays and penetrating power uh, when we get to uh, nuclear radiation. So in 1905, so remember, Max Planck did started this work in 1900. Um, in 1905, Albert Einstein concluded that electromagnetic radiation behaves as both a wave and a particle. Uh, a little side note on Einstein. Um, Y'all all have seen Einstein, right? Um, like old gray hair, fuzzy, like making funny faces. That is not this Einstein. Um, this Einstein in 1905 was like 20 something years old. Um, he was a young, young man when he discovered all this stuff and wrote his most important papers. Um, he became famous afterwards as an adult and as a as an older gentleman. Um, but when he did his most important work, he was like in his 20s and 30s. Um, and so he was a, a, a pretty young person. Uh, in fact, if you look up a picture of young Einstein, uh, he looks like Robert Downey Jr. that played Iron Man. Yeah, uh, you're like that That kind of, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I think he kind of looks like Iron Man. Uh, 
Uh, I'll look one up as soon as I get done. I will look one up. Um, but radiation behaves as both a wave and a particle, according to Einstein in 1905. Um, he took that quanta idea, just a little packet of energy um, that, that goes along with the light, and he called it a photon. So a photon is a massless particle. Remember, light doesn't have any mass. There's nothing solid about it. It's just pure energy. Um, a massless particle of electromagnetic radiation that carries a quantum of energy, a little packet, a little amount of energy. Um, the energy of a photon can be determined by its frequency. So he figured if we can figure out the frequency, we can do the math to figure out the, the energy um, thanks to Planck's equation. So he took this energy of a photon times Planck's constant uh, was well, equal to Planck's constant times the uh, frequency. And we're going to start to do problems now. This is the first example. They're going to do another one where we use the wavelength to try to figure these out. Um, so what is the energy of a photon of light with a frequency of 6.2 times 10 to the 14th power. So turning this on, I'm going to come over here and we're going to do this on the board first. So just like the other one, we need Planck's constant. Does anybody remember it? Does anybody have good memory? Uh, 6.34, 6.63, oh. 6 I think, times 10 to the what? Negative 34. Yeah, negative 34. Good. A uh, really, really, really small number. So negative 34 means I would move the decimal 34 times that direction and add zeros in between the decimal and the six. Um, and so that's a really, really small number. And that's in joule seconds. Um, Get used to, uh, we're not going to do a lot of work on paper this year, um, and so you might get away with it. Um, if you have plans on going to college, uh, and this is not going to be like your last science class, uh, get used to using units, um, especially if you're writing stuff down on scratch paper. Uh, we will do stuff later in the year where the units get crazy, and if you don't start writing your units down, you will not get to the right answer. Um, I will have to come help you every single time, and you're probably not going to get done with the assignment. So get used to using units and crossing them out. Um, so what we're doing here, they give us frequency, right? So the frequency is 6.26. We need to multiply that by Planck's constant. So we're using this formula. Energy is equal to Planck's constant. I'll put a little H over here. That's the early release schedule. We're done with early release. So it's H times frequency, the fancy F. So we're going to have 6, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th power in brackets times our frequency, which is 6.26 times 10 to the what? 14th power. 14th power. You're going to put that in the calculator. You're going to hit enter, and it's going to tell you what the correct answer is, which we can see right here. Literally just multiplying. That number times that number, Planck's constant, and we've got to write 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 times your frequency, and your answer is going to come out to be 4.15 times 10 to the negative 19. So not quite a small, still a really small number. You would take the decimal and move it 19 times to the left and add a bunch of zeros in front. That's going to be an extremely small number. Close your book. Uh, so, yeah, we ain't done yet. We still got more stuff to go over. So the Planck Einstein equation can be used to determine energy of photons emitted or observed. Uh, not observed, absorbed. Um, basically, this is actually kind of like what, uh, what? Are you still recording? Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I left it over here. The online people will be like, what was he talking about? Uh, this is basically the stuff that Niels Bohr did. Uh, he took the atom, the hydrogen atom, and was exciting the electrons and pushing them up into different levels. And then when he stopped putting the energy in, they would go back down to their original level. And what would they do? Spit out little pieces of light in different colors. Um, so he took that as being different energy levels, but he didn't really have the math yet to figure out what that energy was. Um, and so Planck and Einstein worked together and they figured out we can figure out these energies by looking at the colors that come out. So here, they're going to kind of introduce this idea that um, depending on what element you're burning, their, their example here is this uh, 
tube. Uh, this probably has hydrogen in it, and they're burning hydrogen. Um, they take the light that comes out of the tube, pass it through a prism, and the prism's going to separate it out. Because, like, what do prisms do with sunlight? No, they don't reflect it. What do they do? Make a rainbow. Yeah, they make a rainbow because the sun is burning a whole bunch of different elements. It has all these different elements in it. So you're going to get, like, pretty much the whole rainbow. But if we're only burning a couple elements, we're going to only get different parts of that rainbow. Um, we're going to get different colors. And using scientific uh, determination, we can figure out exactly what colors match up with what elements. Um, so this is probably hydrogen. Yes. So you can see hydrogen here has four lines. You got an orangish one, a green one, and different blues here. Um, and we can know the exact frequencies of these. Um, sodium has just these two lines. Uh, mercury has a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, neon has a whole bunch of stuff here. So these are actually really important. This is how we know what, what stars are doing out there. Um, we take the light from them. We use a little bit more advanced machinery than just like uh, some paper with, with holes cut in them and a, a prism. Um, but they actually separate out all these colors and they figure out which elements correspond to which lines. And we can know which star is burning what element and how much it has left, how old it is, what its life cycle is. Um, and if you're interested in that, take my Earth and Space class or my dual credit geology class because we talk about that. Um, but this is what Einstein and Planck put together. They said we can get these frequencies and we can know exactly how much energy is coming out of these elements um, as they're emitting the light. Um, so this is called atomic emission spectrum. Um, this is the energy that these different atoms are emitting when their electrons get excited and they move to different levels and then move back down to the ground state. So um, remember, energy is directly proportional to frequency. They go up and down together. Uh, your wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. And if you move around the, uh, the equations a little bit, you can see that your wavelength is also inverse to your energy. Um, so the bigger the wavelength, the lower the energy. Um, the smaller the wavelength, the higher the energy. They're going to go opposite. So remember, inverse is like opposite. Direct is together. All right. You'll see that in other science classes too. So now we got to do a little bit of combining with these equations. I'm going to turn the light back on real quick because we got one more problem to see. Uh, right here. So we have E equals H times F. Over there, we have C equals F times lambda. Um, what if we want to switch out this F? What if we don't know the frequency, but we know the wavelength? Um, are we able to rearrange that to solve just for frequency? Yeah, so what is the frequency formula? Frequency is equal to what? Light divided by wavelength. Yeah, the speed of light over the wavelength. So C over lambda. So we can just plug that in into that equation. So we can have energy is equal to H times the speed of light divided by lambda. So this is your second equation. If they give you frequency, you use this one. It's real easy. You just multiply. If they give you wavelength, you got a little bit more work. You got to multiply the speed of light and Planck's constant and then divide by the wavelength that they give you. And that's going to be the next example that they give you here. So they rearrange this, and here's your new formula. E is equal to H times C divided by lambda. So now you got three numbers that you got to get together. Uh, so their example here, what is the energy of a photon whose wavelength is this amount? 4.21 times 10 to the negative seventh power. Uh, we're going to come over here and do it on the board real quick just to show you. It's a lot of numbers but it's really not that bad. You're just putting stuff in the calculator. Uh, take your time and, and make sure that you have the right thing for the speed of light, the right thing for Planck's constant, um, and figure out what your wavelength is. So on this one, you're going to have Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th power times the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th power divided by your wavelength, which they have is 4.21 times 
times 10 to the negative seventh power. Put that in the calculator, hit enter, and you should be good to go. It's going to give you a number in scientific notation. Uh, remember, if your cal I think most of them are fixed by now. If your calculator is giving you a regular number and not a number in scientific notation, let me know. I can switch it over where it gives you numbers in scientific notation. Um, so this assignment has a couple more questions on it. Um, to be honest, if uh, I imagine y'all are going to have some issues, we're going to go a little slowly. Um, if most of the classes don't get done today, we will have tomorrow to finish up both these assignments. Uh, in, oh, light is a wave and light is a particle. Uh, but do your best to try to get done because uh, to be honest, we'll probably do that anyways. Um, and then we'll take the quiz on Monday. So um, go ahead and get started. Make sure you got your calculator if you don't already. Uh, don't think you'll need a periodic table again today. Um, students at home, online, uh, I will post this video as soon as I'm done. I might just pause it and see if, uh, if anybody has anything that I need to add to the video. So uh, keep watching after this if you're watching the video, which nobody really does. All my videos have zero views. And then today I had uh, some some creeper get on and put some sort of weird link in one of the comments. So I had to go in and disable comments to all my videos. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't click on links and comments on YouTube. You're going to get a virus on your computer. Don't do that. Uh, so everybody have a nice day and, uh, look for some extra help on questions, uh, right after this on the video, if it's there. Okay. I just wanted to add one more thing for y'all. Uh, as we went through some of the problems, uh, people were having some questions. So there's going to be one question where they give you the energy, they give you the energy, and they ask you for the frequency. Um, so on that question, you're gonna use this formula, but you have to rearrange it, because you need to get frequency by itself. So you need to move the Planck's constant over to the other side. Um, so if we're multiplying here to move the Planck's constant to the other side, you need to divide it. Um, so when you divide this over underneath energy, you get this equation. So this is the equation you're going to use um, to solve for frequency if they give you the energy. Um, so it's going to be the energy, the number they give you on top, divided by the Planck's constant, the 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Um, you're going to divide that underneath the energy that they gave you. Um, so those are the problems where they're asking for frequency. There's also one problem where they give you the wavelength in centimeters and they ask you for the energy. Um, so on that problem, you're gonna set it up just like we have here. Um, you're gonna multiply Planck's constant and you're gonna multiply the speed of light, get that answer. And then when you divide with the wavelength they give you, um, like some people's it was uh, 12.7 centimeters. You need to move the decimal twice to the left to convert from centimeters to meters. So if you had like 12.7, the number you put on the bottom here would be 0.127. Um, you're not going to have any times 10 to the whatever. Uh, it's not in scientific notation. Just do 0.127 if you had 12.7. Or if you have a different number, just move your decimal two times to the left. Um, if you have any problems or have any questions, please email me. We will try to finish this up tomorrow. Um, so you'll have a little bit of extra time to work on both of these assignments. Uh, but please make sure you're trying to get them done. And uh, if you have questions, take a screenshot of your problem and, and email it to me and I'll be able to help you out. So thank you and uh, y'all have a nice day and uh, see you tomorrow.